here in Liverpool ahead of my second Tangerine Dream gig of the week and it's at the Grand Central. Da -da -da. Couldn't quite figure out the entrances. It doesn't look very inviting at the moment. So I walked around the block and there was uh, Torsten Kreshning and Paul Frick having a quiet moment in the rear courtyard. I could have just walked up, but I thought I'd let them have their quietude uh, probably amidst uh, lots of setting up and cables connecting and sound checks, etc. Anyway, here's to later on. And that was a blooming good concert. I was very ambivalent about the uh, Liverpool concert. If I hadn't been for my two older children coming along for the concert this evening, I probably would have sold my ticket on um, a standing concert, but it did lend it a, a completely different vibe. Um, ability to move around and get some different angles. And uh, the stage was a lot more compact than the Royal Northern College of Music. And the presence of organ pipes in the background lends itself to have a much more kind of impactful stage uh, behind the band. And they didn't look quite so far apart on the stage. Like Manchester, it seemed like... Turn right onto Rodney Street. Thank you. Manchester, it looked like they would have to sort of shout or wave hard to communicate. Whereas tonight, it was very clear that they were close together. Communication, smiles and nods. Very uh, uh, amicable, amiable stage presence together like they were all working hard but enjoying themselves really really cool to see standout piece for me was uh, ricochet part two yes reworked but that uh, piano introduction just absolute brilliant one of the things i love about a concert is it's uh, bringing the like the tribe together the people who nucleate around a particular identity or music, and of course, a fan and love for Tangerine Dream. Uh, one of the uh, more joyful problems of existence is that there's way, way too much good music to listen to. And uh, nothing like a concert or two to uh, make you deep dive long and thorough through an artist's music. There's just so much good music to listen to. So it's been a joy these past couple of weeks to really dig back through Tangerine Dream and um, hear an experience from live twice. And yet, yeah, it's not just a matter of Knopfdrucken. It's not just them pressing buttons on stage. There is real hard work, uh, effort, creativity, problem solving going into their performances uh, yeah so thank you tangerine dream for a really cool couple weeks of uh, intense focus and deep dive i think the deep dive will continue for another day or two as uh, i kind of wind down out of this well i've got several days at work coming up now but nevertheless waking up lunch breaks and a bit of the evening i will be getting a little dose of a uh, Tangerine Dream. So if you've enjoyed my Tangerine Dream videos, please do subscribe in time there will be more. I tend to do a new video around the time of a Jean-Michel Jarre release. There's a lot of stuff on ancient sites and I'll have some other bits and pieces to share. But now I need to find my way back to the car and drive home for about 40 minutes. Don't know Liverpool brilliantly, but uh, anyway. Good shows, good shows. I've had a few hard days at work since filming after the Liverpool Tangerine Dream concert. And a few things have come to mind that I'd like to add into this video before I uh, export it and upload it. A fantastic German word which I'd seen in the, the Zest Tangerine Dream uh, Facebook group after the Manchester gig. Somebody posted the set list which was on Steve Rothery's podium. And at the bottom of it for the improvisation, uh, there was a phrase, Bedeutung Schwangere Melodien, uh, which means uh, pregnant with meaning melodies, which um, Hoshiko was going to be playing in the real time 
composition. I love the German language's capacity for innovating new words. So, yes, Bedeutung schwangere Melodien. Pregnant with meaning melodies. Makes me think what pregnant with meaning melodies are there historically in the Tangerine Dream back catalogue. Thinking perhaps uh, White Eagle. The opening to Ricochet Part 2. Song of the Whale Part 2. Um, like those where there's uh, melodies just, uh, yeah, they, they, they in a good way haunt you. Thinking some of the parts on Encore, uh, Cherokee Lane, Monolite, absolutely brilliant, haunting, meaningful melodies, pregnant with meaning melodies. So thank you, Bedeutung Schwangere Melodien. Also wanted to share a really cheesy pun exchange. Waiting in Weatherspoons, just downhill from the uh, Grand Central Hall before the Tangerine Dream concert in Liverpool. Um, went to the coffee refill machine and it was Franca. And uh, I've thought that many times going to uh, coffee refills at Weatherspoons at Franca. You press your button and he drums down and it says Franca on the middle of it, depositing your coffee. I posted that onto my own personal Facebook and me and a friend had a nice Tangerine Dream pun field exchange. I will anonymise my friend, but my puns will be there for you to see. If you have a good Tangerine Dream pun, add a comment, go on. And also want to acknowledge my friend John. Um, who recommended to me where to park in Liverpool. Crazy, but the car park right next to the Grand Central Hall closes at 8pm. What's that about? Anyway, so he recommended John to park up near the Royal Philharmonic, which I did. And it gave some beautiful cobbled street stamp, low light or available light photography. And uh, had I not had to zoom back for work uh, to get some sleep in for the next day, I would have walked those streets for a bit longer, listening to Tangerine Dream and taking some more atmospheric shots. <laughs>